Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Puppeteer Full Tutorial Series for Absolute Beginners. In today's episode, I'm going to show you a use case that's often required if you're working on any project in Puppeteer. The use case we will try today is checking for elements in a web page. Now, this is a most common use case that is often required on a day-to-day -day basis when you're working. You will be given a list of or an array of elements that you need to find if they are present in the web page or not. Classic example, very, very useful and often required on a daily basis. So let's go ahead and implement that today and learn how to achieve this. This is part 20 of the series. If you have missed out on the first 19 parts, make sure that you go through this list in order to learn and master Puppeteer with me. I have covered most of these details with multiple use cases and in detail with code examples. Today we are learning how to check if elements are present in a particular web page or not. So to do that, we will have to utilize some of the existing methods like launch, new page, go to, but the new method that you will use today is page dot dollar dollar method. That using that we can check for multiple elements in one go. So that's the use case I'm going to show you today. Let's deep dive and open our editor and start with coding. So I'm going to create a new JS file. So I have my episode 20. All right, so I'm going to create Puppeteer. Let's say require Puppeteer. All right, so we'll create an async function and let's call it check element elements present or not right so let's check present so I am going to give a URL and I'm also going to pass a array which will be a list of elements that I want to verify if they are present in my uh, page or not so let's throw in a try catch and console.log unable to able to check elements in the URL Okay, and let's just throw in the error. In the try, we'll first create the browser instance, puppeteer.launch. You can again have an option to have headless mode true or false. By default, I always say it's true, but I like to open it so we can see the output. New page. right so we created the page uh, the next thing we'll do is to navigate to that particular page to the URL now that we have it let's check present elements right presence results let's call it present and let's create a array now we have this I'm going to loop the list of elements that will pass it as part of our array for each what we'll do is const found elements equal to now this is where we'll use the page dot eval dot page dot dollar dollar to evaluate that particular element okay so what this will return is whether the element is present in the page or not okay if it's present then what we are going to do is inject that and say element to found element dot length is greater than zero okay that means if this particular element the one that we are looping is found in the page if that count dot length is more than zero that means if it's present in the page push it to the array with that list okay that's all we have to do and we can just do a console log now now you will see that using this one single method we can do I can check for any elements just by adding them into our array a lot of people individually check that that's not the right way you should always have an array and pass that details so that way it's much easy for you in long run to have multiple elements that can be checked last thing we'll need uh, let's close the browser All 
right and if you want you can throw in a console but this should be fine all right so now this element this function needs to be called it requires two things one is the uh, say http com. the first one is the URL the second will be the list of elements that we want to check so I'm going to create an array and let's say if they have something called dot header class check if they have something called main content right this will let's pass an ID and last we'll need is let's say if they have a footer element so here I'm passing three different things one is a class one is an ID and one is the semantic wrapper so we'll pass the elements as part of my second parameter so that's all so now it will check and present it so to run it let's do a node episode 20.js let's run it so see it says dot header is false main content is false and footer is also false so I don't know uh, what they have but I think they should have a header um, or say div right I'm just going to use a simple div and see if they have a div I hope they should have a div in some your connection was interrupted okay uh, looks like something failed so I'm going to close it here clear uh, something went wrong let's see what it went wrong some connection with the problem with the connection I think but now it's back so so you see the div is true and main content is false and footer is false right so that way you can extract the information of any element that you want in a web page and check if that particular element is present or not right you can also extend this and check if how many occurrences are there for a particular element by passing just by passing one more thing and you can add it into an object and create this take the length of this right so you can that way you can modify this use case so that is something for your homework okay so the logic is instead of directly pushing the element push an object and take the length also which is already available with us right? perfect all right so that solves our today's use case in the next episode I'm going to show you a little bit of advanced use case of data scrapping from a page okay we'll try and scrap the data in different ways different types of um, thing etc and that way should give you more confidence of writing um, advanced query for data scrapping all right so join me there in the next episode thank you so much for joining in this episode please do like share and subscribe to my channel see you in the next episode we will do an example of data scrapping of different elements Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.